Hi, my name's Danielle Stein Fairhurst and what I'd like to take you through today is how to build a rolling forecast model. Now I know there's lots of fancy software out there that will do it for you, but I'm going to show you a method just using plain old standard Excel, standard Excel formulas and maybe just a little bit of formatting. So it's going to look like this when we finished it. So it's just going to be a chart so we can see our actual and our forecast. Uh, we can put in our uh, uh, assumptions that go in here and it's going to roll out forward at any point in time. It will roll forward for 12 months. So let's get started. So I've set it up for you like this. So we've got our start date here. So our start date is based on this number here um, and then everything rolls forward from there. So we say uh, our current month plus 365. Uh, we've also set this up with actual and budget. So I've used some if to say if it's uh, less than or equal to the current month, give me actual, otherwise budget. And I've also used some flags here. So flags are a pretty common uh, method in modeling uh, for working out whether something falls within the forecast period or not. So at the top here, we've got our budget. Uh, then we've got our actual. So what I'm going to do first of all is just populate this with some formulas and I'll say if this row here is equal to the word budget, we'll pick up the budget. Otherwise, we'll pick up the actual. There we go. So we'll copy that across. So that creates a block of formulas like that. So we can see that it will automatically pick up either the actual or the budget. And then of course it's nice to have a little sum over like that and we can copy that down. There we go. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is uh, use we want to use our historical data now you might use some drivers uh, sometimes we have a different driver for every single line item in this case we are going to use uh, the forecast we're going to use uh, some regression to look at the historical data and then use that to forecast going forward so we're going to use the last couple of months of data so I'm going to start from here uh, because obviously you can't it's quite hard to forecast when you don't have any history so I'm going to use that um, those two numbers there to create a forecast that goes out uh, over the next year or so but before we do that I might just go back and talk about the forecast function so um, you know if you've got some data that looks like this we can go in and create a line chart. Now if I were to look at that, uh, create a, a linear trend, you can see exactly what the forecast is going to look like and I can do that by dragging it down. But a much better way to do that would be to use a forecast function. So forecast will basically uh, forecast our numbers directly along that trend line. So the x-axis will be July, the known Y's will be the history and the known X's are the corresponding points on the X axis. So I can just uh, copy that down like that. So that gives us uh, a, a formula that will forecast along the linear trend. Uh, which is which is fine. Uh, alternatively, uh, that's kind of a, a, a you know that that method has been around in Excel for a, for a long time. There is another way of doing that, and that is just to use a forecast sheet. This is a relatively new addition to Excel, and um, that formula there you can use, which is um, you can just use it as a forecast.ets, which will take into account. Uh, the seasonality of the historical data. So I probably prefer to use that formula, the forecast.ets. So that's going to take into account some of the seasonality. So rather than just forecasting along a linear trend. So I'm going to go in here and use a forecast.ets. 
ETS. I find it easier to use the, um, the dialog box. So the target date is going to be that number there. So I'll go in and put my dollar signs. The values are going to be these two. Okay, so what I'm, going, what I'm going to do here is anchor the first column because I want it to roll forward. So I put the dollar sign in front of the uh, E, but nowhere else. There we go. So the timeline though is similar, except I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the two and also in front of the E. So we've got to get the dollar signs in this case is really important. I'm just going to leave the seasonality blank. There we go. So if I've got my dollar signs right, I should be able to copy it across and down let's just do a bit of a test there we go okay so you can see that it's picking up the numbers correctly so it's rolling forward like that okay all right looking good so I can use that formula there and I can copy it all the way across okay wow and it's going to go all the way we're going to actually forecast out for around about two years except I don't actually want two years I only want it to show uh, for a 12 month rolling forecast. So I'll get to that in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of a look at, ah, okay. You can see here we've got a negative. Now that's a bit of a problem. So you can see uh, the formula is doing what we asked it to do, which is to uh, forecast. And it really doesn't make sense though to have a negative value. And this often, often happens with forecast functions. So I'm going to use a max formula around it and say max comma zero. So that is going to give me the maximum value between the formula and a zero. Okay, so that got rid of that problem. The next thing we want to do is only forecast out for 12 months. So it doesn't make sense for us to show a forecast here because we already have actual data for it. We only want to forecast from uh, the forecast period forwards. And that's where these ones and zeros come into it. So I'm going to take the formula that we've already built and I'm going to multiply it by the zeros and the ones. Again, I'm going to get my dollar signs right. There we go. So that's a that's a zero because I don't want to include that in my rolling forecast control shift right arrow. There we go. So that has forecasted uh, along and only taken into account the the 12 month period going forward and I've set up some uh, little calculations down below and that is uh, is what has been used for my uh, my chart that's been set up so the dotted lines there I did that by uh, using a, uh, a dash type of a dotted line uh, which is kind of nice when it shows uh, the forecast period and then a solid line for the actual and the budget. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do there is to just go in and add in some spark lines because the spark lines just add a nice bit of visual uh, to the end. Okay, I'm going to change the color I'm going to sort of make, get it to match my color scheme and I might just make it a little bit heavier there we are maybe that's just a little bit too heavy okay there we are and you could also uh, choose the high point and the low point perhaps and drag that down And there we have it. So the thing that I really like about this method is that it's completely dynamic. So next year or next month, even when you come along and you want to make a change. So if you want to change, uh, if you want to change the current month, you would say I'm looking at um, the third and you'll see that that will uh, that everything will flow through. And then if I were to add in some data for my actual everything will flow through beautifully. And the other thing that I really like is that if I were to change that to 2022, there we go, you can see everything's uh, linked throughout uh, and everything has completely updated as well. Of course, you'll still need to update the numbers, but building a model like this is completely flexible and dynamic. And it means that once I know it takes a little bit of work to set up, but once you've got it set up, it's going to save you so much time in the end.